Which, 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 what is what harder? Doing uh, doing action movies, doing the big jumps, uh, doing the, the really physical roles. I think it becomes more challenging. Wesley Snipes was once one of Hollywood's most prominent action stars, with memorable roles in films like Blade and Passenger 57. However, in recent years, Snipes has gradually withdrawn from the spotlight, leaving many fans curious about his life and career. After many rumors, at the age of 64, Snipes has finally spoken up, confirming some facts. What is it? What is the reason for his disappearance? Let's find out. On the 31st of July, 1962, Wesley Snipes was born in the city of Orlando, Florida. When Wesley was a youngster, his parents, Marion and Wesley Rudolph Snipes, divorced. This event brought about significant changes in Wesley's life. He spent his childhood in the South Bronx district of New York City, where he was exposed to the difficulties and difficulties that come with living in the city. On the other hand, Wesley discovered his love for the performing arts at a very young age, despite the pandemonium that was going on around him. The Me Nobody Knows was the title of the off-Broadway production in which he made his debut as an actor when he was only 12 years old. When Wesley was seven years old, he started training in martial arts as a means of protecting himself from the dangers that he encountered on the streets. Not only did he do this as a means of self-defense, but it also turned out to be a significant interest of his. The highest degree of proficiency in several forms of martial arts, including Shotokan Karate, Hapkido, Kung Fu, and weapon abilities, was attained by him. During the years 1975 to 1977, Wesley attended the High School of Performing Arts in New York, where he not only honed his acting talents, but also learned dance and singing. During this time, he also received training and education. After his parents divorced, Wesley Snipes moved with his mother and family from the South Bronx to Orlando, Florida. The change from the bustling urban environment of New York to the slow-paced life in Florida was initially a shock for Snipes. However, he gradually adapted and began pursuing his passion for the arts at Jones High School, where he joined the drama department and showed his talent for acting. Wesley Snipes was not your average school-aged child. To earn pocket money, he became a member of a city-sponsored theatre group called Strutton Street Stuff. They performed puppet shows in parks and schools to entertain crowds. Performing was not the only thing he was passionate about. He also captivated audiences with a one-man show in which he played Puck in Shakespeare's A Midsummer Night's Dream. He was awarded and recognized for his performance. Snipes decided to pursue his education at the State University of New York at Purchase after completing his high school education at Jones High School. In addition to pursuing a Bachelor of Fine Arts degree, he immersed himself in the world of theater by participating in several plays. These programs allowed him to further hone his skills and demonstrate his commitment to the performing arts. Wesley Snipes' early career in Hollywood was not smooth sailing. Critics were not exactly kind to him when he first appeared on stage. However, Snipes possessed a unique quality, both in his natural athletic ability and his charismatic personality, that made him hard to ignore. As a result of these characteristics, he would be able to survive in the highly competitive entertainment sector. He found himself rubbing shoulders with emerging stars, prospective studio chiefs, and even a filmmaker who had won an Academy Award from the very beginning of his career. There was a significant turning point in Snipes' career when he made his debut on Broadway in the play The Boys of Winter in the year 1985. It was his performance that first garnered attention, which ultimately led to possibilities in television advertisements and regional theater. However, the moment that truly changed his life was when he was able to attract the attention of a casting agent during a talent competition. This opened the door for him to receive further exposure. The next year, Wesley Snipes made his debut in the film industry with the film Wildcats, in which he played a defiant football player opposite the ever-popular Goldie Horn. This was only the beginning, since it was the first of three on-screen duets with Woody Harrelson, who was just beginning his career at the time. The same year, he appeared with Adrian Pazdar in the film Streets of Gold, in which he played the role of an ambitious boxer. Joe Roth, who would later become a studio executive, was making his directorial debut with this film. These early jobs served as stepping stones to larger ventures, one of which was his indelible performance in the music video for Michael Jackson's legendary song, Bad. In the film, Wesley Snipes portrayed the role of a gang leader 
who memorably slammed Michael Jackson against a wall. This scene was so powerful that director Spike Lee subsequently stated that Michael Jackson must have been terrified to death since Wesley was so genuine. Wesley Snipes was already attracting the attention of Hollywood just one year after he had delivered a single line in a music video for Michael Jackson. In the longer version of Bad, which was directed by Martin Scorsese, Wesley Snipes portrayed a rival gang boss. He displayed his ability in a sequence in which Michael Jackson's character danced him into submission. That particular moment made an indelible mark on me. Shortly after that, however, Snipes had a slump in his career. It was during this period of relative calm that he experimented with various methods of earning a livelihood, including trying his hand at remedial massage and even parking automobiles. The outage, however, would not be for very long. It was going to be a game-changer when he received a phone call from a person who had been secretly admiring his craft, none other than Spike Lee. Do the right thing, Lee's next picture offered Snipes a modest role, but Snipes had his sights set on something more significant rather than accepting the offer. Instead of taking the little job, Snipes decided to go for his first large mainstream role, which was in the 1989 comedy Large League. He played the character of Willie Mays Hayes, also known for his speed and ability to grab bass. This movie provided his career with a much-needed boost, and it rapidly became one of the ventures that received the most positive reviews. It was in the 1991 film Jungle Fever that Snipes got his big break with Spike Lee. Accolades from the critics were bestowed upon him for his performance as a man who was entangled in a difficult interracial romance. With the part of the brutal drug boss Nino Brown, which was created expressly for him, he proceeded to climb to prominence with the film New Jack City, which was released in 1991. The movie was a huge success at the box office, and it gave the urban crime genre a fresh start overall. Wesley Snipes experienced a period of great success during the 1990s, which culminated with the release of Blade in the year 1998. In addition to grossing more than $150 million all over the world, Blade, which was based on the Marvel Comics character, was a pioneering film that combined horror with action. It was Snipes' portrayal of the hero who was half human and half vampire that led to the film's economic success. Additionally, Snipes demonstrated his versatility by delivering a remarkable performance in the film One Night Stand, which was released in 1997. This performance earned him the renowned Volpe Cup for Best Actor at the Venice Film Festival. His ability to easily transition between genres was on full show when he shifted from the heartfelt drama The Water Dance, which was released in 1992, to the wild comedy to Wong Fu, Thanks for Everything. 25 years ago, Julie Newmar. Throughout this period, Snipes rose to prominence in the entertainment industry, and as a result, he was honored with a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame in the year 1998. The year 2000 and beyond. During the turn of the century, Snipes had both difficulties and opportunities for comebacks. Following the successful completion of the Blade trilogy, which culminated with the release of Blade Trinity in 2004, he was confronted with some legal and financial challenges. In 2006, Wesley Snipes was found guilty of tax evasion, which resulted in a jail term of three years and caused a significant amount of disruption to his career. In 2014, he launched a determined comeback to Hollywood beginning with a role in The Expendables 3, in which he reconnected with Sylvester Stallone and joined an all-star ensemble. His release in 2013 marked the beginning of his comeback to the entertainment industry. After that, Wesley Snipes proceeded to experiment with a variety of roles over the years that followed. Alongside Eddie Murphy, he had a starring role in the 2019 biographical comedy Ptolemaic Is My Name. Subsequently, he had appearances in the comedy films Coming to America and True Story, both of which were directed by Kevin Hart. On the other hand, the new millennium has proven to be a difficult time for the legendary actor. In contrast to his notoriety in the 20th century, Wesley Snipes has mainly avoided the public eye in recent years, appearing in only a handful of interviews and other public events. The reasons behind his disappearance are unusual, which brings us to the next stage of our story. Fans have frequently pondered what happened to him, and the reasons in question are startling. Not only did Snipes' issues with identification and adjusting to a new culture affect his upbringing, but they also impacted his adult life. His college years and beyond were not the end of their relationship. 
with only four other African-American students in the theatrical arts department at the State University of New York at Purchase. He was one of the few students of his race. His description of the incident was that it was similar to mold growing on white bread. The fact that he came upon the works of Malcolm X, which underlined the importance of African-American pride, was what helped him get through this confused period. Snipes gained a feeling of self-worth as a result of this, which ultimately assisted him in navigating an environment in which he frequently felt out of place. When Snipes was a student in high school, he temporarily converted to Islam because he discovered that it provided him with a sense of power and dignity. However, three years after graduation, he left the faith, noting that while Islam helped him remain afloat during difficult times, he finally moved on when he was ready to discover his way. He left the faith with the intention of moving on to other things. While Snipes was still in college, he tried out for a part in the movie Speed Street, which was directed by Harry Belafonte and was about breakdancers. However, he was not selected for the role. A good learning experience was gained despite the fact that this setback occurred. Surprisingly, even though he possessed both talent and experience, Snipes was never selected to play the lead role in any of the shows organized by the institution. Having made up his mind to disprove his detractors, he decided to leave college to seek professional employment, and he swiftly established himself as a top actor in demand. Wesley Snipes was a student at Purchase College, and one of his acting instructors reportedly said that he was bright. In addition to being a hilarious person, he was also able to sing, give pure drama, and even create dance sequences that completely stole the event. Additionally, even at that time, he possessed a powerful awareness of black consciousness. According to Wesley Snipes, the rumors are true in 1987, after Snipes had been in the classic music video for Michael Jackson's song, Bad Music, he went through a difficult period. A therapeutic massage and a valet driver were two of the jobs he held to make ends meet. Nevertheless, things started to go in a different direction when he was offered a part in the HBO series Vietnam War Story. This led to his breakthrough performance as Willie Mays Hayes in the film Major League, which was released in 1989. It was recognized as one of the finest sports comedies ever made, and it opened at number one at the box office and grossed more than $75 million all over the world. Because Major League was so successful, the filmmakers were anxious to develop a sequel to the film. Now, however, Snipes was beginning to feel the effects of his popularity. In a conversation that took place a few years after the initial film, his co-star, Corbin Burnson, recalled something that happened to him. I told him, hey man, they are going to make it to the second major league. In addition to that, he said, are you going to do that? I couldn't help but think, wow, how quickly you forget. He was going to become Wesley Snipes. According to what Corbin said with Sports Illustrated, that rubbed me the wrong way. Following a minor motorcycle accident that occurred in Hollywood in August 1983, Wesley Snipes was taken into custody for carrying a hidden handgun that was loaded with hollow-tip bullets by law enforcement. As well as a fine of $2,700, he was sentenced to two years of probation without supervision. In the year that followed, his reputation took another knock when he led a Florida state policeman on a high-speed chase at a pace of 120 miles per hour, which ultimately resulted in Snipes crashing his motorbike. Even though he was just issued a penalty for careless driving and declined to receive medical treatment, the incident made him appear less than trustworthy. Snipes was resolute in his pursuit of becoming a celebrity, despite the obstacles that he faced. His agency made it quite obvious that he would not allow anything to get in his way once he signed with one of the most prestigious agencies in Hollywood. On the other hand, Hollywood was first quite hesitant. Agent of Denzel Washington was informed by studio officials that they would never recruit somebody darker than Denzel Washington because they were not accustomed to his black skin and unique attractiveness. Even if it meant going against the advice of his agency, Wesley Snipes was completely committed to making a name for himself in the entertainment industry. It was possible that other actors might have avoided taking on parts that he did, such as Nino Brown in New Jack City. This audacious choice paid off, as the film went on to become one of the most successful films of his career. Wesley had successfully established himself as a prominent actor and was gaining the acclaim that he deserved. He was at the pinnacle of his career. However, success was not without its difficulties. 
In the spring of 1991, when Wesley was at the pinnacle of his success, he had a sudden and severe wake-up call. It was necessary for him to have a vehicle in order to go about filming the water dance, and the production company granted him permission to borrow a Mustang that they had leased. Regrettably, a member of the crew failed to recognize that Wesley had taken the automobile, and they accordingly reported it as stolen. Wesley was stopped by the Los Angeles Police Department, LAPD, in the downtown area of Los Angeles that evening. In addition to being handcuffed, he was made to lie on the ground with his arms stretched out in front of him as an officer pointed a pistol at his head. The cops refused to explain what he had done wrong, even though he asked them several times as well. At long last, he was freed from the custody of the police after being imprisoned there for a period of two hours. Later on, Wesley referred to it as the most embarrassing event he had ever had in his life. During a press conference held to discuss the event, Wesley was joined by other actors such as Blair Underwood, Tico Wells, and Reginald T. Dorsey, all of whom discussed their own personal encounters with police misconduct. Black Hollywood was there to support him. However, due to the progression of his career, there were others who believed that Wesley had abandoned those who had backed him. As a result of his infrequent attendance in dark festivities and ceremonies, his followers were left feeling dissatisfied. In addition, criticism increased over the jobs that Wesley was selecting. While some individuals were ready to ignore the interracial relationship that occurred in Jungle Fever in 1991, by the time One Night Stand was published in 1997, a great number of individuals were dissatisfied with his continuing engagement in interracial situations. During an interview with Five magazine in October 1993, Wesley made some terrible statements when he was asked about his dating preferences. These comments further alienated some of his followers, which added to the debate around his dating preferences. Despite the fact that Wesley Snipes had been associated with a number of black artists following his divorce in 1990, including Halle Berry and Jada Pinkett, there were speculations going about that he preferred engaging in relationships with people of different races. The statements that he made about black women were the source of the uproar, and it wasn't simply his dating choices that were the source of the problem. Wesley expounded that he naturally encountered a greater number of white ladies in the entertainment sector because he was surrounded by only white individuals. According to him, at some point in time, a black guy may select the most attractive white woman who either resembled black women or with whom he felt the most at ease. But Wesley did not depart from that point. He continued by saying that after moving into this arena of whiteness, it became unpleasant for him to return to the black community, where he felt estranged and out of touch. He said this because he was at a loss for words. He made it quite evident that he did not have to exert as much effort while working with white ladies. It was possible for him to just exist and be regarded as a superstar since he was dating someone who was not of his race, which was something he stated black people would not do. Not only did his remarks irritate individuals, but they also outraged a great number of them. In November of 1997, Wesley threw fuel to the fire by boasting about his new girlfriend, Donna Wong, who was of Asian descent. In his description of their connection, he said that it has a unique type of energy that he found enjoyable. It was admitted by him that black women were dissatisfied with the fact that black men were dating outside of their race. However, he stated that wealthy black men like himself did not want to return home and bicker with their spouses. He implied that black women were not offering the type of love that he was searching for by saying that it was quite natural for him to want a more empathetic partner. Because his relationship with Donna Wong did not work out, Wesley married Nikki Park, a South Korean painter and artist, in the year 2003. Together they have four children. His prior comments, on the other hand, had already had an impression on his professional life. Kamal Lawswell, a film reviewer, observed that any time he reviewed one of Wesley's films, he would receive a response from individuals stating that they did not wish to watch his films. Alternatively, if a movie did not perform well, they would remark that it was just because he was disrespectful to black women. Wesley Snipes started taking on jobs that left his admirers scratching their heads in the middle of the 1990s. In To Wong Fu, Thanks for Everything, Julie Newmar played the role of Noxima Jackson, which was one of his most notable performances. However, just as his followers were beginning to doubt the decisions he was making, Wesley responded by announcing that he would be starring in the Blade franchise. 
It was in August of 1998 that the first picture was released, and then in 2002 and 2004, when Blade the Seku and Blade Trinity were released. The films in question were considered to be Wesley's comeback to the public eye. Nevertheless, there was a significant amount of turmoil going on behind the scenes. Even though Blade, Trinity was met with mainly tepid reviews from critics, the movie turned out to be a commercial success. This event catapulted Wesley Snipes back into the domain of action heroes and brought him back to the forefront of the public consciousness. However, just as soon as his career had begun to ascend, it started to sink much more precipitously. Following the release of Blade, Wesley went on to feature in a string of films that failed to live up to the enchantment of his previous work. Both critically and commercially, The Art of War was a complete and utter failure. It was the first film to fail. Then followed Zigzag and Undisputed, both of which did nothing except widen the chasm wider. Blade, Trinity delivered the finishing strike on the opponent. In addition to being the least well-liked film in the series, it was also negatively impactful on Wesley's reputation in the entertainment industry. The situation became much more dire when Wesley launched a lawsuit against New Line Cinema and the producers, seeking a sum of $5 million. According to him, the director, script, and supporting actors of the movie were all authorized without his agreement, which was a violation of his contract as a co-executive producer during the production of the movie. Additionally, Wesley said that the film's writer and director, David Goyer, had made racist remarks on his professional conduct. In addition, he said that New Line Cinema had purposefully employed only white people, that they still owed him $3 million, that they had given his co-stars more screen time, and that they had failed to assist him in obtaining a Canadian tax exemption, even though he was being paid by a Swiss corporation for a movie that was shot in Canada. There was more drama to come after that. Patton Oswalt, an actor and comedian, said that Wesley would spend his days smoking, would only contact him through notes, and would be confined to his trailer. In addition, there were speculations that Wesley and David Goyer had a physical confrontation. Although Wesley subsequently denied that these charges were true, one of the witnesses reported that Wesley Snipes was not exactly a team player when he was working on the development of a movie. They stated that he was not willing to assist his fellow actors during their close-ups, and that if the shot was not a front-on close-up, he would bring in a stand-in to perform the acting for him. Further allegations were made by a staff member who wished to remain anonymous, that Wesley referred to his co-star Jessica Beale as that chick. Wesley, on the other hand, defended his actions by implying in an interview that he should be targeted due to the fact that he is of a certain race. However, this behavior did not sit well with the big studios, and as a result, many of them began to distance themselves from him sooner rather than later. Things went from bad to worse in July of 2005, when he was deemed an undesirable individual after being discovered traveling on a fraudulent South African passport. After that, in 2019, Marvel made the announcement that they would be rebooting Blade, although Wesley was not welcomed back. Instead of playing the major part, they decided to cast Mahashala Ali. Wesley did not seem to be bothered by the situation and expressed to Entertainment Weekly that he had no problem with the brand moving in a different path. In addition, he stated, I do not feel any loss in doing not work with Marvel. During the 1990s, Wesley was able to earn $10 million for each picture and 10% of the total gross revenues. Nevertheless, as the year 2000 drew near, his financial condition started to become increasingly precarious. During the year 2002, the William Morris Agency lodged a claim against him about a debt amounting to $500,000. It was during the summer of 2003 that his Florida house, which he had purchased in 2002 for a total of $1.7 million, went into foreclosure and was eventually sold at auction for a mere $636,000. However, a court finally decided in favor of the bank, even though Wesley had opposed the transaction and claimed that the mortgage had been signed with a fake signature. In 2007, Wesley found himself in an even more precarious situation when he was accused of neglecting to submit income tax returns from 1999 to 2004, so allegedly cheated the government out of almost $12 million. It was alleged that he, along with two other defendants, was involved in a plot to commit tax fraud, employing a variety of strategies to avoid paying what he was to pay. 
prosecutors said that Wesley Snipes attempted to avoid paying taxes on his estimated income of $38 million by sending some peculiar communication to the United States Tax and Trade Administration. He insisted that he was nothing more than a customer who had placed their faith in the wrong individuals, despite the fact that the entire circumstance presented him as a co-conspirator in a scam devised by others. Despite the fact that he was indicted, he continued to write letters to the Internal Revenue Service, requesting protection under the Constitution. Wesley was able to avoid criminal charges after a protracted legal struggle. Nonetheless, he was found guilty of three misdemeanor counts for failing to file tax forms. The judge handed down a sentence of three years in jail and imposed a heavy punishment of up to $5 million on him simultaneously. It was his contention that his punishment was arbitrary and that he was unable to obtain a fair trial in Florida that prompted him to launch an appeal. Unfortunately for him, the appeal was denied and he served a total of 28 months at a federal institution located in Pennsylvania as a result of his conviction. After Wesley Snipes was released from prison in 2013, after serving a sentence for tax evasion, he continued to face legal problems related to his taxes. The Internal Revenue Service, IRS, announced that he still owed about $18 million in taxes. Frustrated with the way the IRS handled his finances, Snipes decided to sue the IRS, claiming that the agency had intentionally manipulated the numbers to increase the amount of tax owed. Snipes sued the IRS over these allegations, but he was unsuccessful in his appeals. In 2018, the court ruled against Snipes, forcing him to pay the tax debt that the IRS demanded. When he was released from prison in 2013, tax issues took a toll on Wesley Snipes' career, especially his ability to regain his status in the entertainment industry. The tax debts demanded by the IRS undermined his finances, making it difficult for Snipes to fully focus on his acting career. The constant legal proceedings disrupted his comeback process, while also creating a negative image in the eyes of the public and film producers. In addition, his imprisonment and tax evasion issues caused him to lose many acting opportunities for a long time. Previously, Snipes was one of the top action stars with famous series such as Blade, but after the legal case, he faced not getting the big roles or high-budget projects as before. These legal issues may have also made some filmmakers wary of working with him due to concerns about financial risks and production disruptions. However, Snipes has attempted to return to the screen with smaller roles, including The Expendables 3, 2014, and several other projects, but has not yet achieved the same level of success as before. The legal issues with his taxes have put his career in a long freeze and have not been able to fully recover its previous momentum. While he has not fully regained his former glory, Snipes has continued to star in other television and film projects, including Spike Lee's Chai Rack, 2015, and the television series The Player, 2015. In 2021, Wesley Snipes gained attention for his role in Coming to America, the sequel to Coming to America, 1988, alongside Eddie Murphy. The film received positive reviews and Snipes was praised for his comedic acting. This comeback has helped him gradually regain his position in the entertainment industry after years of difficulties due to tax issues. However, Snipes still faces barriers in regaining the big leading roles he had before. Some minor jobs that do not give him the celebrity power he formerly had are still offered to him even though he does not receive as many large movie offers as he had in the past decades. In an interview, he shared that although filmmaking is fun, it still does not fully satisfy his deep artistic aspirations. He feels more freedom and creativity when working on musical and dance projects. Snipes emphasized that if he had to choose between filmmaking and dance performances, he would choose dance. This is the environment where he can explore his most natural emotions and find true joy. What do you think about Wesley's return in a different role? Please share your thoughts in the comments section below. We would love to hear from you. And don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel for more interesting updates. Thank you and see you in the next videos.